going first in this game with battling boxer upcut upper cutter and chief second in hand we're looking really good here also a little bit of extension with the living fossil and the flame vault counter in the starting hand I i'm really happy with this hand upper cutter and chief second we're gonna use to get ourselves out king dempsey here we're gonna get that se second piece of interaction with the cross counter. We're gonna detach it material. I did misplay here. I wanna point this out. Upper cutter during the next turn is way better than doing it during this turn. Now we're gonna show off the slight link package we're playing with Isol here. Uh, sending that Durandal to get um, the Durandal into hand as well as special summoning our monster. Now we're only using this engine to get out Princess Princess is really interesting in this deck. Gives us another interaction to our deck with the Swarm Ship. Two pieces of interaction. This deck I'm trying to use as a turn one control deck instead of a super aggressive boxing. I mean, boxing is a sport of defense and offense, so it's really cool how they implemented that into the R-Type. Now we have two traps set face down, as well as King Debsey cannot be targeted by effects. Um, looks like my opponent is on um pendulum i felt like the skull crowbat joker was a perfect send off to use and it doesn't matter the target here i do like this monster here because he gains a little bit of attack points he's a bigger name but honestly he's not the best in the situation he gets to add a scroll crowbat to hand as well as get his oaf dragon and wisdom magician now i'm looking for a right time to break these scales and i'm not really seeing it especially because if i trigger that scale that would have gave him the spell anyway. So we're trying to find that wiggle room there. And there it is. He gets another one to hand field. So he'll be able to bring the trap into rotation too. Now he's summoning two through one. And I'm looking for the right target with the princess. And I see it. I want to clock him out of tuning. Um, This deck has really easy access to Baron. And I felt like that was the perfect time to show it. Now we have Princess and our King Kaiser on the field, but with our opponent not having access to any negates so far, so I still feel like we're in a really good spot. Time Star Magician's gonna come out triggering the Pendulum to get a Wisdom Eye to hand. I still think we're in a really spectacular spot. He's gonna detach, add the Chronograph Sorcerer, the, the other um, archetype Sorcerer in the deck. Heavy um, Metal Foes Electrite's gonna come out to trigger um, another activation of Astrograph. Makes sense why this card is at one. It is, interactions are very good, but also very uh, done multiple times per turn. With just one card in, in, um, in, uh, reacted. Okay, that was a bad sentence. We're gonna get right back into it. I'm gonna act like that didn't happen. He gets his trap like I predicted, and he's gonna draw another card. Wisdom Eye is gonna set that Pendulum Scale right back up, and he's also gonna send a card out of his deck to get his deck uh, triggered. There's Chronograph. He's gonna use those two to get Starving Venom. He's gonna use the Electromite a second time per turn, triggering the Astrograph again. The funny part about this is he still doesn't have lethal. He can only get over that princess. He can't get over my Kaiser. And I still have a uh, Speller Trapped in Gate. So I'm really just trying to pick out my battles here. He gets rid of my Flame Vell counter, which is fine. I can recycle it for the next turn. But he goes into access code. I noticed the access code line. And honestly, it is good for me that he's going to do that. Because he can't target the Kaiser with the access code, I believe due to the effect of King Dempsey in earlier than duel. He's going to use Selene as well to recycle his pendulums out of his um, graveyard. He does target the Kaiser, but he also has to target that princess because the princess will trigger the effects of the monster, guaranteeing us a livable turn. Now it's all about, can I get rid of the rest of the cards in this field? Um, he goes into a link three plus a one monster. Of course, it's Apo, meaning two negates, though, doesn't seem that challenging for me. All right, starting off, Boxer Promoter, meaning now we are locked into battling boxers, but honestly, that's not a big deal um, just because with the amount of cards we have. Uppercutter is going to come out and bait another negate for me. Still, I think I'm in a really good position here. 
With that living fossil in hand, I'll be able to still combo off. Now it looks like my opponent has the trap card time pendulum grasp, but with that trap card, he'll have to get rid of his last scale, making this a top deck situation because I also have the ass blossom in hand. Now in this interaction, I do not get the kill this turn, but I do live to see another day. This deck is all about resilience and with two cards face up on the field, he has to end. Now in my hand, I have the one card combo as well as a hand trap. So we're in a really good spot here. Um, and he sees the babbling boxer promoter um, go off in surrenders. All right, going first, we open up with the Battling Boxer Uppercutter and Flame Bell Counter in hand. Honestly, this trap doesn't really affect us that much because it is turn one. So Sparrer is really good now, but in turn two situation, Sparrer is, that's when Sparrer is on the decline. Decline, uh, Sparrer is gonna come out. We're gonna go into our XCs here. The play is King Dempsey to get another piece of interaction. And honestly, we're chilling here. Four pieces of interaction, as well as putting that spar in grave. So we have a monster to target with the effect of Uppercutter next turn. He's going to call by the Uppercutter, which is an interesting piece of interaction here. Um, that does take away Flame Bell counter. That's good for him. He just took an out in the gate without really knowing about it. But we still have a lot of cards in our disposal here. Snake Eyes Ash, I'm going to use the cross counter there. Snake Eyes Ash is a really good negate, and I can also send it to the graveyard. That seems like a really good plus to me. Lead Yoke is the monster I choose because Lead Yoke can survive the battle as well as increase his attack power to get over the cast here Unicorn the next turn. Decreases we serve we take the 300 but we survive and now we can out the monster he shows us the birth Which is interesting, but we will make do with what we have a uh, living fossil is a pretty good uh, Rebirth here. We're gonna get spar into rotation our opponents gonna get rid of the three other cards here But we're gonna start link summoning here. We're gonna use lead yoke and our ice old or our uh, Sparrer to go into Isold. Isold's gonna send or uh, get Phoenix Gilfried for a turn two play. He gets rid of a King Dempsey. We do play, uh, I believe, two at the time. We'll see. We get this guy to recycle the Uppercutter as well. I misplayed. I thought Uppercutter was activatable. I was wrong. But we do get ourselves a Princess here. And Princess effect, we're gonna special summon our Uppercutter once again. We're gonna go into swarm ship. We just added a piece of interaction to this, honestly. With the cards we had, it was a pretty good reaction to me. And recycling that uppercutter to get a flame valve counter negate up, I thought was a good play. Now leaving my opponent with one, ca two cards in hand, and he has a Kashtira monster. I'm gonna use the Kashtira uni the called by on the Kashtira unicorn to keep it negated, so he can't take anything from me. But also here, I'm gonna use it to pop, or he's gonna try to negate, but I'm gonna chain my princess to make sure that my uppercutter and his unicorn go back. Now, the reason why I did that is because one, I wanted princess, and two, I want to make sure I have a spell, or uh, a spell, or equip spell to for the phoenix. Now, I also did this to enable the Flame Bell counter face down. And I used that uppercutter to send that Snake Eye spell to the graveyard and negate it. Taking out a massive play by my opponent. He can put that Snake Eye's Ash in the zone. But setting one, I have almost lethal on field. And I have a monster in hand to summon. We're going to banish that Living Fossil. Bring out the Phoenix Gilfried. Set a card. Go for our damage. Ending the game there. These games are long. That's how the deck is played, but it comes out on top. La long rounds. All right, this is a pretty interesting hand. We are going second, but we opened up with two interactions. Our opponent is on um, uh, Kestira, 
Using that effect veiler, so not only do we negate the effect, but we also can't let them get any cards to hand. Looks like that's all they have really had. Cash Tier is a one card combo in itself. So he goes to use that uh, effect, but he can't. We're gonna use the hand, uh, the Durandal, to get the promoter to get started with our combos. We're also gonna get a bunch of names to our arsenal so we can extend as much as possible. Now our opponent is gonna use Baylor on this situation, which is unfortunate for us. Um, we'll have to figure out something. He takes away our Zeus, and we're gonna use Head, um, head Guard to um, use an effect, but it looks like our opponent has an out to it as well with the second Baylor in hand. Macro Cosmos locking our monsters down. We're at a bad, uh, or not a bad spot, but an interesting spot. So we're gonna go into battling Buster King Dempsey here to use the ring announcer to out the spell and trap. Our opponent's gonna surrender there after he's seeing the out to Macro Cosmos. All right, going first, this is an excellent hand. We open up Chief second as well as Boxing Promoter. That's really good for us. We get Uppercutter and Spar into rotation here. Honestly, Spar was just a monster. I chose the summon. Wasn't really the right pick, but it's fine. We're gonna use King Dempsey here and use King Dempsey's effect to get the other piece of interaction. Now we have two traps set face down. We're also keeping that uh, uppercutter in the effect so we can wait to bring out the boxer promoter. We activate Max C. Our opponent has the call by. I'm gonna, I believe, chain the flame wall, flame wall counter to put some pressure on my opponent to give me cards. Now I'm feeling really confident with the hand I have already, but if I can stop my opponent from doing anything just because of Maxi, I feel in a good spot. Uh, my opponent has Bonfire. He's going to choose to search for that Snake Eyes Ash. I have a cross counter waiting for him, and I sh or actually, I have a Veiler waiting for him. I have the cross counter as well, but I'll save that for another time. He can go to battle. He can take out our promoter, sadly, but that's fine. We have still a really good board on us, and we do top deck the promoter. Now I'm gonna get rid of that chief second to spe uh, I can also special summon that promoter, and he can special summon that card during the main phase. Triple attack is officially online, I believe. Actually, it's not online yet. My apologies. Uh, I'm waiting for a certain play on my opponent's part because he has to activate some kind of effects. Now, lead yokes in rotation. We're gonna special. We're gonna normal summon uh, switch hitter with the effect of chief second. We're gonna increase all of these guys to the level of five. General Kaiser is in rotation. We're gonna take out this guy, and we're gonna take out the snake eyes. Now, I could have done a little bit more damage if I switched that Dempsey to attack mode. Would have been 2,300, but that's about it. I'm going to detach um, Uppercutter to activate Uppercutter's effect, which is going to be setting that trap on the field. My opponent is going to surrender there, giving us a... The deck is insane. I really enjoy it. All right, the last game of the day. Um... Promoter in hand is a really good start, as well as Durandel to bait out any, um, what's it called? Any Ash Blossoms. We do have the called by, but I still like to bait him out. He does have Max C, though. Honestly, that's really good for me because I do have that called by. And that was during the main phase, so my triple tack in hand is online. The reason why I'm playing triple tack is that I feel like it's a very versatile out to some monsters. Just the battling boxers have really good renewal and negate energy, but their attack power isn't the part that really is exciting about them it is the part where they can longevity last now that was a really good mill we have phoenix gilfried in rotation and an ash blossom my opponent is going to use that imperm on the switch hitter honestly that upper cutter was the right pick there but that's fine we're going to go into a rank four the almighty the heavyweight champion of the world battling boxer king dempsey we're going to use his effect to get the other negate leaving us with four different negates i misplayed with the uppercutter again because i i was really testing my mind i was like did i do something for it not to be active my opponent's going to use the cast here of Frenrir as just a generic summon to out my card but i do have the imperm 
It was very interesting. I really didn't have a choice in the interaction. So I just let it be. He sets one and passes. Honestly, we're still in a really terrific spot. Um, Battling Boxer is on the field as well as I'm going to use this trap card Flame Vow counter to negate cash your preparations because that said it was activatable So I try to keep myself out of danger We're gonna go into battling boxer shadows a one of because we like to combo off with our uh, Our monsters lead yokes here as well as Phoenix Gilfried pitching the Durandale We're gonna use the effect of cross counter to bait out that cast here a friend here Honestly, I should have probably went into a different um, battling boxer because I like lead yoke. But King Dempsey's here because King Dempsey is a really good one for the second one because it got us a search. And it was a really good search because we're going to use that card to uh, bring back Durandal. Durandal effect is going to give us a negate on board. We're going to hit him for uh, 5,800 with a negate on board as well as a Zeus. If you don't have to use Battling Boxer Promoter, you can go into cards like Zeus, and I could have summoned a Baron de Fure at that point as well. Honestly, really good turnout, but I felt like uh, Phoenix Gilfried was doing the same job Baron would have, and I didn't play Baron at this time, but I really noticed it later on. Cast here a Big Bang doesn't worry me, but this interaction doesn't worry me either because he's going into a Baron. But if he tries to pop one of my monsters, I win the war. Which Phoenix Gilfried is going to start after he does it. And Zeus is it going to be the one that's going to finish this. Now he could have done this a lot differently. Um, he misplayed on his part. He should have targeted Zeus. I would have protected Zeus. Or ah, didn't matter. I think I would have. I had multiple choices in that matter. He has the unicorn in hand as well. Leaving him with kind of a disadvantage here. He was really using the Baron as an outmaneuver and then using his cards to really be a final um, push with the Unicorn. Uh, Chief Seconds, an excellent draw, giving me an additional uh, summon. Uppercutters here. We got Headgear in the rotation as well for our next turn. He's going to take away our Isol, but I just need to go into a monster with 2200 attack. And Blade Armor Ninja is a perfect target for that. Being able to attack twice. Showing off that Blade Armor Ninja at the very end. Shout out to Chops for that one. Hey guys, before the deck list, I just wanted to show you guys a quick tutorial on the combos. This deck's pretty simple with the pure build of it. So you use the reinforcement of the army to get yourselves uh, a promoter. Um, if you have to use your normal summon for promoter, it's fine. Promoter effect's gonna special summon two boxers. You're usually gonna pick the two same ones every single time. Uh, Chief, and you're gonna get Upper Cutter. Upper Cutter effect, we're gonna get ourselves um, the trap Flameful Counter. Now, honestly, with this hand here, I can save some resources for my next turn all things considering. So the board is literally just gonna be King Debsey. Either in defense mode or attack mode, that's up to your choice, depending on your play style. And you're just gonna search a trap. It's very simple, but very effective. With the upper cutter giving you a flame vial counter negate, as well as the Dempsey getting the battling box or cross counter, you have two negates. Now, I also like to throw this deck with a lot of hand traps like Maxi, as well as some good traps. Now, also during the main phase two, if you do it right, you can use the effect of Battling Boxer during the draw phase to you discard an overlay with Upper Cutter to bring back another Battling Boxer. The Battling Boxer of choice is Promoter, and that is the combo, guys. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the deck list. Alright, so this is the deck I used in today's video of Battle Lion Boxers. Um, I thought it was really fun and entertaining. Um, there's a few cards that I didn't really get to show off, but you could change out. I'm playing Utopic Future as well as uh, Utop Draco Future. Honestly, with how the games went, you could easily switch these two out for a lead yoke. And a Baron de Fear. Especially with that Phoenix Gilfried, I feel like it's a good option to have.
Um, affect Valor at two because honestly, I want the uh, I wanted as much uh turn uh interaction with my opponent as I could. I felt like Valor was a really good option for that. I was thinking Nib in the very beginning, but I had a game where I couldn't even out the Nib token, so I decided to cut that. Um, we're playing a very small Infernoble package with Durand Durandel and this guy to use Isold. Um, Maxi Ash Blossom. One of Headgear and one of Glassjaw. Two Spar, because during turn one, Spar is good. But during turn two, Spar is not good because he takes away your battle phase. Um, switch Hitter at one. It's a very good option for Uppercutter if you already have the Flame Vault counter. Um, Shadow is the same option as um, is a Spar, but it, you have to be further into the combo, so that's why that. Our main uh, battling boxes are Uppercutter, Chief Second, as well as Promoter. Um, we're playing Phoenix Gilfried. It's very easy to get with uh, Infernoble or Noble or Isold, so you can get it for a turn three play, as well as Rota to search any of these monsters. Triple Tack for that interaction where your opponent has a monster that you're not for sure how you're going to out, but they have activated a monster effect. It came up a good amount of times also just to get me some cards. I play the one of the ring announcer. It's really good spell and trap removal if you have a good amount of Xyz monsters. Living Fossil is another option for uh, Isold, as well as a really good just Monster Reborn. Durandell's playing like pretty much four uh, four Rotas. It really came in clutch a few times, especially with the Phoenix Gilfrey. And uh, being able to recycle it with Renald. Called by, I really don't want to get Max Heater Ash Blossomed or Effect Veilered, so that's what that's for. Imperm at three, I feel like that turn two, um, or that turn, when we go turn one and we just set up a crazy amount of traps, that's really good, as well as that interaction play if we're going second. Flame Thou Counter, it's searchable with Uppercutter, and Uppercutter is the best target for it with 200 defense points. Cross counter. We're playing a lot of battling boxer Xyz monsters, and it really enables your plays if you're going into any of these guys. For example, battling boxer cross counter could special summon King Dempsey just to get you a free card, or it could special summon Lead Yoke to enable a Zeus play for your next turn. You never know. Extra deck. We're playing a few uh, generic cards. I just threw Baron in there. I thought it was a good pick for you, and I recommend it with the Isold or the Renald and the Phoenix Gilfried. Blade Armor Ninja is a very valuable Zeus target with the ability just to be a, a generic warrior. Uh, Xyz and it can attack twice, so it also helps with some more damage at times. Lead Yoke, the same way if you're not using King Promoter, you can get into Zeus very easily with the Lead Yoke, especially because it can eat two attacks. Um, battling Boxer Celestius, it is a way to quick effect out a monster it battles with the negating effect. And it cannot be destroyed in that battle. So if you really need to out a monster, it can do it. As well as Battling Boxer Kaiser is a good way to recycle your monsters. Honestly, it didn't come up. But with the with, with us playing the other guys, it, uh, it is very useful. King Dempsey at 2. You could easily play this at 3 and take out the Kaiser. Oop, press the wrong button. And then uh, I felt like Battling Boxer Celestius is really good uh, removal. If it's and it does a little bit of burn damage, but you could send this away too to get another um uh Kaiser. So that's your call. Alright guys. Uh, we're oh almost forgot the links. We're playing a small link package of three monsters. Isold will get you into Princess, Princess will get you into Swarm Ship. It adds another piece of interaction as seen in the combos. So if you guys have any questions down below, make sure you leave a like and subscribe. And I hope you guys enjoyed the deck and the deck profile. Thanks for watching. Have a good one, guys.